Don't be discouraged. It's often the last key in the bunch that opens the lock. John Wooden. My friends, stick with this. You can get it. All you have to do is practice 10 to 15 minutes each and every day and do that with us. Practice trade it all as often as you can. When you start getting good at the practice trades, really test yourself with fractional trading. What is that? That's using a small dollar amount, say $100, to see if you can earn 2, 4, 6% on that. What's your maximum loss? Hey, if you lose 20%, you're down 20 bucks. Please, whatever you do, do not think you're a genius just because the market's going up at a particular stock or index and you're just riding that wave and you think you are the man or the woman and you go start throwing money in the market and get crushed. That defeats more people than anything. So test yourself, work hard, you will get this and when you get good at it, you will know. Now let's jump into these charts. Remember, we're not a stock calling service, we're an education firm. Let's see what's up. Everything is, well, we see stocks are and bonds are down for the day. Gold and Bitcoin is a booming. HODL up 11.29%, but let's jump first into the S&P 500. Will this market ever top out? I don't know. If they just keep printing money, issuing bonds, and flooding the markets with currency, as they call liquidity, What's going to happen? Well, if you keep blowing a balloon up, what? It gets bigger until at some point it pops. But I tell you, sometimes things are a lot more elastic than you might think. Where are we now? Well, we're starting the week off a little bit down. You can see where things most recently topped on Thursday afternoon. Pull back some on Friday, down in the morning and in the afternoon on Monday, 0.28%. Now, is this the top of the week where everything's going to roll over? Can't possibly tell you. We've not hit the high of last week yet. We'll see where things are. Nothing surprises me now. Uh, we look at where we are on the two-day chart. We see that we have lots of volume there. Didn't hit the high of the prior Wednesday-Thursday candle, but we are above the weekly trend line as we are on the half day also, or the 195 minute chart. How much different is the Q's? That is the NASDAQ 100 from the S&P 500. Well, the prior two weeks we had spinning tops on the NASDAQ 100. We see where it really bounded up there again on Thursday, really piped up and hit the high of last week at 4.49.34. It was struggling to get up there the prior week, 4.44.02. 448.64, so that 449.34 was the most recent high. We haven't hit that yet, 446.23, but we are above the weekly trend line. Not much of a trend line there, fairly close to being flat. So again, are we topping off? We keep asking that question. We sure had a high uh, volume the week before, and the week before that had been the week's the fourth and the 11th of March, starting both those Mondays. Last week, not quite average volume. That's where we hit that most recent high. So we'll keep an eye on things. See how this week continues to develop. The NASDAQ 100 down 0.36%. So not much, but not hitting the high of last week. Let's look at where we are on the 20-year bonds. That is the iShares 20-plus year Treasury Bond ETF. Uh, it's barely showing anything there. It is down half a percent for the day, but that weekly candle is really hard to see. It's just a tiny little candle with a little bit of move on the bottom. It is red. <clears throat> we look at the two-day candle that represents Friday and Monday, and we can, of course, see where bonds popped up strong on Friday morning and then, of course, rolled over on Monday. Uh, with this latest two-day candle, does have just right there at average volume, as did the prior one. We don't have anything really to call on bonds because we got nothing to read on here. We got no volume to help us out. And we have red, green, uh, doji, red. <clears throat> it's hard to tell much of anything. I feel like, you know, it probably has more of a down push to it than anything else. But I'm not going to bet on that. Uh, that would be just betting, and we don't bet here. 
We want to lay down probable wins. We don't want to simply throw money at things, even in our practice trades. So again, we see a pretty weak, crappy trend line, almost flat, but heading down some. We are below that on the two day and the half day. Not that it means much. So not much going on with bonds that we can discern. And that's important to know what you can discern and what you can't. What's up with gold? It is up 0.32%. Now gold hit its most recent high this last week. Again, you can see on the chart where it popped up on Thursday morning and then blew that steam off some in the afternoon, then down on Friday, up a little bit on Monday. But you can see that our trend line, if we go ahead and try to redraw it, the only thing we can do, again, when trend lines are getting flat, 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 it means one of two things. It means, of course, the up move is, is slowing down. Doesn't mean it's reversing yet. It could be doing something like we saw where things popped up and then gold slid along sideways moving down and then all of a sudden jumped up. You can digest gains over some weeks or some days or some months and then things can take off again. But when you start seeing the trend line going flat, you know the up move is slowing down. So doesn't mean it's not going to keep going up. Could mean a reversal. But of course, with that, we would want to have sort of a signal like we saw at the end of this last week where we had the most recent high. We had just a little above average volume. Of course, what would we want that to be to be then countered by to tell us things were going to go down? Well, if we go back to gold on the two day chart around the beginning of the year where we saw, well, but we didn't have the volume to go with that. I see the red spinning top showing that it was starting to go down. I can find you a much better example on the S&P showing you like what we are typically looking for here. You can see where we have, this is on a down move. We have higher, we have the most recent down, higher than average volume. Then we have a spinning top or a doji, higher than average volume, and then a reversal. The opposite is true when you see things going up, such as here, we have a doji sort of ending that move. And then we have things rotating over and going down. But you see, it's not the perfect setup and it's not a light, nice, long, stable move. I'm trying to find you another good one setting up the right way on this chart here. I'm not finding it on. I'm trying to think where our last really good up move was. So I can try to show you something that encapsulates that in uh, in a good way. I didn't think about addressing this with you till we started our program today. I'm hoping we're going to see a good one set up here. Let me see if gold has done that for us recently. Um, looks like it could be doing that, of course, uh, on that move there. But let's look back. Look back on gold. Here we go. This is, this is, again, a nice standard. We see it a lot of times in the stocks. Look at that. Higher than average volume with a high peak, okay? And then we have average volume that next week continuing on again. And then we have the down move. We have, the, we have things die, not hit the higher high, so we can still use that prior higher high with all that volume. Market was searching for a top and just found it. It could not get itself higher. Then you have the telltale sign of a spinning top with higher than average volume where things are going to crash down. That's the beautiful telltale signs that we are looking for. And that is what I'm hoping that we're going to see here in gold, either here or even here, where we have av higher than average volume. And then at some point, you know, we end up seeing that red down move with a red spinning top signifying to us that the market has capitulated and it is on the way down. Now let's move from gold, which again is just hanging there, to what's up with Bitcoin? Well, you know, after all the down moves that we have seen, let me set this chart back up for us. There we go. 
And, you know, we saw four days of strong down movement, or four, well, two uh, two day candles of strong down movement. We saw things as they pushed through that prior weekly trend line. We had the doji here uh, with the red volume, which again just means it opened lower than the prior close. But as this week starts, HODL up, we can see in the morning and the afternoon 11.29%. Let's look at 24 hour a day Bitcoin. You can get a little bit better feel for how it has been moving intraday. This is 24 hour chart. You can see where things on Saturday going into Sunday morning, Sunday morning things started moving up and pretty much moving up ever since then, really pounding up on Monday starting at 9 a.m. and then up again the 1215 195 minute candle and then this latest 330 195 minute candle just a booming up now overall BTC USD which again is 24 hour day Bitcoin chart that's up 5.52 percent for the day but of course HODL is making up for any and everything that happened over the weekend because again it's traded on the market only during market hours so we can see it reflecting that one 11.29% uh, gain. So Bitcoin, again, not up to where its previous high was. If we look at where we are on the 24-hour day Bitcoin chart, we got those big figures. You know, the prior high, 73,794. Right now, 71,213 is the high for this week. So that is where we are. Bitcoin trying to get some momentum and start going again. And of course, as we look at things, we simply have a green spinning top right now, but strong up movement in the morning and the afternoon, a green candle forming. But again, we've broken that prior trend line to do anything. You know, what can we do? Draw a flat line? No, we really don't have anything to do at this point other than sort of hold on to where we were on those three prior week candles and see how things might adjust as we go forward. That is where we are, folks. Always love to hear from you. Don't hesitate to reach out to us, cw at chartingwealth.com. God bless.